a pile of books I haven't read. Good afternoon guys, I hope you're good. I'm going to talk through these books, going to talk through a few up and coming things, but I just thought I've never actually shown you the hut in here. As you can tell I'm not in the woods today, I'm back at my on-grid hut in Surrey. So I have these two rooms, I have the hot tub and then the normal houses at that end. This tree used to be about that high, but you can see how long I've lived here for now. It's been about 10 years. Right now I have four friends who live in the normal semi-detached house and I live on my own at the end of the garden in this. That house cost £280,000 10 years ago. It's now worth about four or £450,000, believe it or not. And this cost me twenty grand with decking. I made that table, hot tub. And you think, OK, 400000 for four rooms, so that's 100000 a room and one of them's absolutely tiny. And then 20,000 for a much, much bigger place. Hmm. The maths are a little bit different in hutonomics. But anyway, we go in here. It's very, very messy. But this is my favourite thing, actually. can absolutely pound the music as loud as I want. And I've got a home for all of the different artwork. Most of this is made by friends. Got my artwork, got my music, got my instruments. I'm currently editing my sister's wedding video. It's two and a half hours long. My poor Matt Baguette is struggling, but that's why I can't be in the woods this week. I guess it's priorities. It's her birthday today, actually. Happy birthday, Rach. And I'll try and get this to you tonight. But it's just exporting, so I thought a good time to have a chat with you guys. Got my car from Cuba. Got my moose with its hat from Cuba. This is pretty awesome, I must say. I bought this in Covent Garden. Look at that. It turns everything into a kaleidoscope. So like if you look at the painting and then you look at it through here, how cool is that? And if you turn it around, oh wow, you can see, whoa, you are now inside the kaleidoscope. What I love about the kaleidoscope is that, wow, flip me, you're looking at the real world. You're just looking at it through a different kind of lens. It actually doesn't look any crazier than that painting. But look, mandolin, oh, with a square of light around it, that's pretty cool. Lots of mini mandolins. Wow. Okay, I might be freaking you guys out, but I'm enjoying it. If I want to see the world differently, I just go to this. Through here, you have my easel. Through here, you just have the bathroom. To you, it may be a shed, but to me, it's a sanctuary. It's pretty big, two meters by one meter. And if you look under here, I've got the immersion heater. So basically, I just have a cold water feed that comes from the house to here and have boiling hot water under there hot electric shower. And then through here is my bedroom. Double bed, cupboard, light, curtains, old books that I never look at anymore. And check this out. Sums are not set as a test on Erasmus. It's my family tree. It's some of my family all in here. And if you read it backwards, it's exactly the same. Our maths teacher figured it out. My brother designed that up. <laughs> So yeah, this hut is the other part to my on and off grid equation. Um, it means that I get to still have space, but I get to be closer to the people that I love. And I've realized that actually for me, this has always been a hut and that has always been the hub. And that I've always enjoyed being in community, but having a separate dwelling so that I can be on my own, but near people. Cause I need that space to decalibrate to have introverted moments, to not see anyone. But then you can only go so far like that on your own. And I've learned that. My friend Caroline, who used to live here, actually came over the other night. I was a bit bored. I was on my own, just editing or something. And she came over and we just had the best evening. And you think, it's just a human. It's just another human, but it just makes things better, doesn't it? I know it might sound so obvious to you guys, but I think it's only since I've stripped everything away, got back to nature that I realized there is actually a place for humans in the world <laughs> and I really like them and I want to spend more time with them but I don't want to give up the, s the slower pace, the more engaged living and stuff like that that I've been learning and, and benefiting from recently. 
Okay, I'm gonna go through this pile of books. These are books that have all come to me over the last few months. I wanna say there are some more. You guys have sent me some on tiny homes and stuff like that, which I really appreciate. These are just happened to be the ones that were in my bag. Actually, as we go further down the list, I've looked at them less and less, and some of them just arrived in the last week or so. But I wanna start with this. Last weekend, I had my final retreat of the summer. I partnered with a guy from Actionable Conversations. They bought the people and the content and I provided the context and obviously took people on the walks, on the night walks, cooked food, made fires, you know, discussed about the models behind what we were doing, both on the blockchain community end of things and also on the simple living and the huts. What was nice was Andrew provided this and I called it the retreat book and I've just wanted to share with you a couple of things I scribbled in here. They're just sort of questions and bits of feedback. One guy called Prince asked the question, if you were transported 200 years in the past, what would you do or say to improve their lives? I, I recommend asking that question amongst your friends. It's actually really tricky if you get into it. Why do you want to make a bunch of money beyond 50K? A great question. The money itself, you can't eat it, you can't sleep in it. Same as gold, you can't actually do anything with it. So what is it that you want? above and beyond providing for yourself and your family. As you can tell from seeing inside my heart, I'm not normally thought of as a tidy person. I don't think of myself as a well-structured or organized tidy person. But when it came to looking at our goals and we did a big whiteboard session, I realized that my goals are actually incredibly well organized and I was really surprised myself. I've got about 10 things I'm working on. Seven of them are to be done by the end of the year and three of them are to be started by the end of the year. Um, I guess it's because I'm not striving for anything. These are just things that are emerging. And once they begin, I feel a desire to be disciplined and finish them because I don't like being someone who doesn't finish what they start. But I guess because I'm just allowing things to emerge, I'm not fighting or forcing anything into reality. I don't have lots of random disparate goals because I guess everything is connected. All the different projects are coming from interrelated happenings. It, but it does actually feel quite good to realize that from the lifestyle I've allowed myself, it is leading me towards having quite an organized mind. I, I kind of know where I'm headed, slowly trotting along, enjoying myself, but actually we are creating things and it's quite well organized. Often in the morning when people stay around, I ask them about their dreams because when you're talking about stuff all night long, sometimes weird stuff happens in their sleep. Two of the guys that were pals who came to visit, the one said the last time he heard him speak in the night, he went, oh, oh, put it in an email. <laughs> like stressed and busy and then last night when he was in Gorgovado he said mm, I've never felt nothingness before <laughs> I thought what better a testimonial could you get for what effect the environment has on people if it alters their subconscious I got some decent feedback about phones you know whether it was whether people found it was superfluous or silly to have rules about phones these guys said that the no phone rule is good because it creates intentional and dedicated space to connect. So even if you're not an addict to your phone, knowing that we're actively not using them in this space really creates and protects the space for people uh, to go deeper. And one of the things I found myself telling people when they come to the woods is, you will feel bored. You will feel that sense of boredom. That's normal. I hope that you get there. And then what it's about is the choice to engage and, and dig into that boredom feeling to find a deeper sense of being uh, a lower more subtle sense of consciousness rather than feeling that boredom and bouncing back out into technology or what other people are doing so when you find the boredom going down rather than bouncing out to see what the rest of the world's doing to try and solve the boredom yeah and not discussing what we can do for each other but just making stuff figuring out how to make food and make fire together see what we create see how that feels and if that goes well maybe you end up doing more work together but you just don't spend this time discussing it you enjoy the space and deal with the needs in front of you i've got loads of friends who work in innovation and art and music various different creative forms that i would love to come and co-host retreats in corcovado for the week what I've realized with the Corcovado handbook is that actually there's going to be a lot of blank space in there. All I'm going to do is try and introduce the story, introduce the thinking and the models, and then leave space for you guys to doodle and come up with your own answers to those, the questions that arise in you. Creating your own space to express on the basis of the information presented to you. And then instead of me presenting all of my own story in there, 
I'm going to actually fill out the handbook myself by hand. Maybe I'll share that with you guys separately, but most important is I want you guys to have the handbook so that you can go on your own journey engaging with these ideas and thoughts rather than just sucking up mine. All right, let's get into these books. Rumi's Little Book of Life. If you don't know Rumi, Rumi is awesome. I'll show you one thing. Once you express your sorrow from the bottom of your heart, it will be washed away. Look at a flower. It can never hide its scent nor its color. If you don't know Rumi, you better get to know. As you guys know, Emerson has blown my mind, especially this chapter on nature. It's really helped form my thoughts, and it came from one of you guys, so I really appreciate that. Sebastian Junger, Tribe. Junger basically says that DNA takes 25,000 years to evolve, and we're only 10,000 years into the agricultural revolution, let alone the second and the third and the fourth revolutions that have happened since then. And he says that in our original foraging, hunter-gathering DNA, we are designed to live in groups of 50 or less in adverse conditions, which could not sound any more different to suburbia. <laughs> Very readable, easy to read in an afternoon. Cabin Porn, my sister and her new husband got it for me. Very, very much appreciated, Mark and Rach. Maybe the huts will be in the next edition. Found a great Christian theologian called Simon Oliver who talks about the unknowing, the apophatic theology. His book is called Creation, a Guide for the Perplexed. For me, good authors, philosophers, theologians are a bit like good musicians. I may not listen to 80s funk most of the time, but I can damn well tell you that the best in the category I'm going to love. doesn't matter what the genre is. The people who are best in their discipline are amazing to engage with. And I feel that way about these guys. Check him out on YouTube. I reached out to him and he kindly sent me his book a couple of months later. So thank you, Simon. Sapiens! A brief, a brief history of humankind. This is way too big for, for my liking, but I will try and get into it. Fire gave us power. Gossip Gate helped us cooperate. Agriculture made us hungry for more mythology, maintained law and order, money gave us something we can really trust. Contradictions created culture, science made us deadly. <laughs> wow. I'm actually really looking forward to reading this, but I'm just a bit daunted by the size of it. If any of you have read it, let me know what you think. Now this absolutely tickles my fancy, wets my whistle and gets my goose. It's called The Ecology of Freedom. The theme of Bookchin's grand historical narrative is straightforward. Environmental, economic and political devastation are born at the moment that human societies begin to organise themselves hierarchically. And despite the nuance and detail of his arguments, the lessons to be learned are just as basic. Our nightmare will continue until hierarchy is dissolved and human beings develop more sane, sustainable and egalitarian social structures. For anyone who's tired of living in a world where everything and everyone is an exploitable resource... I can't wait to read this. This is exactly the kind of stuff I've been talking about all year whilst I've been in the woods. Stealing fire. Stephen Kotler and Jamie Wheel. If you guys don't know the Flow Genome Project, then worth having a look. These guys are all about peak human performance. What is it that the guys in Silicon Valley, that the Navy SEALs know about getting into the flow? Which is something I'm very, very interested in. I think that to build a world where humans can flourish, to flourish, your system needs to be able to flow like a good river or a stream. The main thing they're interested in is how you can hack ecstatic experiences. So how can you get into this heightened state of consciousness and being on a more regular basis and for a more prolonged period and to create from that space? They're interested in LSD and other substances to get there. For me, there are very few public figures in modern society other than Jason Silver and probably Russell Brand who speaks so fluidly and lucidly on such existential concepts um, so check it out it's very very inspiring and finally the beast the dictionary itself lean logic recommended to me a few weeks ago a dictionary for the future and how to survive it the idea is that it's got it is a straight up dictionary it's trying to help you deal with literally everything we would know, need to know about in order to deal with the future Lean Logic is 30 years of David Fleming's work put together. It takes us through fields as like culture, history, science, art, logic, ethics, myth, economics, and anthropology. 400 essays covering specific and interlinked topics like boredom, community, debt, growth, 
harmless lunatics land lean thinking nanotechnology play religion spirit trust and utopia wow this isn't just about me stacking my brain up with knowledge the reason i'm sharing these books with you is because i'm lucky enough that people recommend and send things to me i want to share them with you you might pick one from this list to get involved in and have a look at maybe you could share some of your insights back on this page or within the corco creators slack group if you're a part of it um, that would be really cool it is funny when you begin to look back at your story through a different lens and I can see that I've been living in a hut next to a hub for the last eight years or so. I've loved making benches. I made one for my dad as well. This was out of the spare wood from the hut when we made that. I've always been doing these things but I didn't really have the space. I even thought about putting a second hut in here but I don't think the council would have been very happy about it. It's nice to realise that the idea you're working on naturally hasn't actually come out of the blue. When you kind of rearrange your story you realise it was always there. I was just telling myself a different story about who I was and what my life was about. Now we are at the end of August. My first night in the woods was the 1st of November even though I got the keys in late September and I committed to doing one year of weekly videos with a cheeky few bonus videos thrown in and what i want to tell you guys is that we are coming to the end of that i am going to stop vlogging at the end of october i'm going to be going on tour in november and i don't know what happens after that i'm not going to stand here and commit to what's going to happen afterwards i very much hope i think we've got the good ingredients to go for a second season uh version two of corcovado done so much of the thinking I mean in fact I'm gonna even show you what I've been working on the last few days I have been trying to draw out everything from architecture to economic policy to stakeholder groupings trying to think about values trying to basically figure out the economics of modern hamlets <laughs> so I'm doing all this work I'm not doing it for nothing I'm doing it because I want to do a version two I'm not in control of this at all and nor would I want to be. So I'm telling you that the last vlog is gonna be the end of October. Um, I will then go on tour in November with the film that we finished the filming of now. Yes, we finished it on the open hut day, which I'm dead chuffed about. So we're gonna get into the edit soon. I don't wanna do what most people do on YouTube where they, they make and make and make and then they just do one and disappear for a few months. I'm too old for that. I like trying to stick to my commitments. So end of October, I'll be making videos until then. I will then stop. But hopefully there will be a season two and let me know if you guys would like a season two because version two of Corcovado doesn't have to involve season two on the vlog although I'd be sad to miss it but I'd love to hear what you guys think or if you think there's a different format you would like to see us documenting the story whoa <laughs> if you think there's a different way you would like us to try and document the story because it's going to be more than just me if we do do it it will be a number of people involved and speaking of the end of the year this week i got sent a link from one of you guys a guy called nigel who has basically slammed together the year's corcovado vlogs and made one video showing the journey throughout the whole year um, so I'm going to put that link in the description. Nigel, thank you so much for making it, for paying attention, using your creativity. Just downloading all those videos must have clogged up your, <laughs> clogged up your laptop, something rotten. But thank you for doing it. It means a lot that you're paying attention and that you care about the overarching story. It's interesting to see it over a year. I, it is interesting to see it changing and adapting over the course of the year. We're not quite there yet, but it's a best part of the year in review. So thank you for that. The link is in the description. With regards to the tour, I think we're going to try and start in Brighton and I think my guest for that night will be Alfie Days who as you know has done a lot of work helping me in the woods and we're working together on lots of bits and bobs at the moment. One of the things that came up in my conversation with him the other day which I want to share with you is that when you have a good meeting with someone if somebody likes what you're doing or what your dream is or what your ambition is then at the end of it just ask them one simple question it has been key to me going down all sorts of rabbit holes that I never could have imagined is there one person that you can think of that I should go and talk with about this? You're not asking for a lot, but if the idea comes to them, it should come very easily. That simple question has taken me into all sorts of places around the world that I never would have imagined I ever could have gone. But if you're going to ask the question, be prepared to follow it up with the work of chasing that person up and then feeding back to the person that connected you in the first place. My arm is extraordinarily tired now from holding this camera for so long. I will see you back in the woods next Thursday. We are doing a big work day on the 30th. Josh and his pal, 
the solar guy, my dad maybe, a whole pile of people are coming down. It might be one of the last work days we do this year on version one of the Corcovado hut. I will see you next Thursday. Back to Thursdays, yes. 9 p.m. Remember, it's all about relationship. Take care of yourselves and look after each other.